I'm Christine Persichetti. We are celebrating the best education in Brooklyn and Queens this Catholic Schools Week. And that's a fact supported by test scores that show students in diocesan schools rank higher than their public school counterparts. One reason for that, the schools make learning fun. <laughs> St. Patrick's Catholic Academy held a STEM Olympics. Students were divided into 16 teams and given 12 minutes to complete a task testing their STEM skills, from building a tower of marshmallows to a balloon-powered car. While the kids were competing for first place, they still managed to work together. I liked it because it was different subjects and it was got me thinking and it was it was really fun. The school was down here. It's all of them working together. The mission is to lead by example um, like Christ did. So for them to be able to work together and show that example, I think it was like a beautiful thing and it made me very proud to be uh, in a Catholic school. And what would an Olympics be without the medals? Each winner got to celebrate their special victory at a closing ceremony. We're airing a current news special celebrating Catholic Schools Week. It'll highlight the amazing education offered by the Diocese of Brooklyn and how students are going above and beyond, even outside of the classroom. So be sure to tune in tomorrow, Friday, February 2nd, right here on Net TV for that current news Catholic School Week special. And just a programming note, that special will air at 8.30 on Friday. That's because during our regular time, Net TV will broadcast a live mass from the Co-Cathedral of St. Joseph, honoring and remembering infants lost. So once again, that mass will be at 7 p.m. right here on Net TV. The Currents News Catholic Schools Week special will be at 8.30. On Tuesday, Brooklyn Bishop Robert Brennan got his own STEM lab lesson. Some of the sugar is coming off of you, sh the stick. Bishop Brennan joining the students at Our Lady of Trust Catholic Academy in Canarsie as they made rock candy from scratch. The younger students showed the bishop their artistic side, performing faith-based songs for him. The students from the Canarsie School put faith behind their lessons, and on Thursday, they had a lesson in faith from the saints. His name is Saint Nicholas. Students at Our Lady of Trust spoke about the holy men and women at their saint fair. They studied the lives of a saint of their choice and presented what they learned to their classmates. The superintendent of Diocese of Brooklyn Schools, Deacon Kevin McCormick, says this week highlights who we are as Catholics. He explained further to Current News during one of his school visits. Who are we? We're a group of people dedicated to the whole understanding of Christ as the center of our life, but then our responsibility to go out into the world and change it. And that's what we see with these kids. They're beginning to dream. They're beginning to, to take the, the Catholic imagination, which says that grace abounds everywhere, and then moves it to the place where it begins to recreate a future that we can be very excited about. Be sure to stay with Currents News and the tablet for continuing coverage of Catholic Schools Week. And if you're interested in sending your children to Catholic school, just visit catholicschoolsbq.org or call 718-965-7380 for more information. A new study is showing the power of faith. According to a survey from Pew Research Center, 70% of American nuns, that's people with no religious affiliation, still believe in God or a higher power. This comes as the number of nuns, meaning religious sisters, is dropping across the country. According to a projection from the U.S. Bishops Conference, the amount of religious men and women in the U.S. will drop over 50% in the next decade. Here to break these numbers down even further is the national correspondent for the tablet and crux, John Lavenberg. Hi, John. Hi, Christine. So, John, that high number of nuns, meaning those with no religion, has to be a good sign for the church, right? I mean, how are spiritual leaders planning on taking advantage of this new information? Absolutely. Some, some bishops I spoke to who work in the evangelization space for the U.S. Bishops Conference talked about the fact that these nuns, there's an opportunity there for the, for the church to reach out to them and show them the beauty of the faith. So it really goes to outreach, evangelization. Those are the things dioceses need to pick up. Uh, as Pope Francis says, reach out to the peripheries to reach these nuns and try and bring them into the faith. The survey also found out the main reason why those nuns aren't religious. So tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, a few of those reasons are they question church teachings, they don't necessarily believe in God, and they don't see a need for faith in their life. But one positive thing that that survey also found, which goes to the reason they think they can reach them, is they actually found that religion they think is good for society in the sense that it helps people find a purpose in their lives. Okay, now to the troubling numbers about the religious groups in the country. For a lot of communities, they didn't have any members who profess perpetual vows in 2023. But what can you tell us about the ones that did? Yeah, so the average age of those that professed perpetual vows in 2023 was 36. So there were some that were older, some younger, right around that 36 range is where they fell. There were also two thirds of them were white. But what was most interesting is 99% of them came from uh, their biological parents raised them through the transformative years of their childhood and 90 percent of them have been Catholics their whole lives. So there's a clear trend there of who is taking these perpetual vows year after year. Hmm, interesting stuff. John Lavenberg, national correspondent for the Tablet and Crocs. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Christine. You can read more of John Lavenberg's reporting on these two surveys online at thetablet.org. Also on the website, you can subscribe to get future papers where you can read amazing stories just like the ones you'll see in this week's tablet. Like this breakdown about young Catholic professionals. The tablet found out that for some, the Bible could be just as valuable for their careers as an MBA. In response, Brooklyn is forming a local chapter of a nationwide organization that's helping members get closer to their faith as they climb the corporate ladder. The paper is also celebrating Black History Month by remembering the first black priest ordained in the Diocese of Brooklyn. Monsignor William Rogers served for almost 70 years, bringing people closer to their faith while also speaking about the civil rights movement. Catholic high schools across the country are doing amazing things. One in Louisiana is having its students use their robotic skills to help one of God's creatures. Here's the camera. Look at you. The team at Holy Savior Menard Central High School created a custom <laughs> wheelchair for a puppy who lost both of her front legs at birth. They started the project last year, building their first prototype with a 3D printer. The pup kangaroo outgrew that first model, so the robotic students say they'll keep working on more wheelchairs until she stops growing. And finally tonight, what do the Pope and the 2024 Oscars have in common? He's our producer. <laughs> Pope Francis met with filmmaker Martin Scorsese. Scorsese has become a regular at the Vatican. This time, he gave the Holy Father a book about his latest film, Killers of the Flower Moon, which he has been nominated for. So now I bet you're wondering, what are the Pope's favorite movies? Well, based on previous interviews, these are his top three. The Holy Father was moved by the realist war drama called Rome, Open City. The 1945 film is an account of the city under Nazi siege. The Pope also likes La Strada, the winner of the first ever Best Foreign Language Film Oscar. And finally, Pope Francis's favorite film of all time is a movie called Babette's Feast. It tells the story of two unmarried Protestant sisters in Denmark who welcome a Parisian girl as their housekeeper and cook. Going to have to check them out. And that is this current news update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. And a reminder, current news will be airing at 8.30 p.m. Friday night because of a live mass broadcast. Hope to see you again next time.